guys good morning everyone my name is alex welcome to our channel here at eos marketplace news now i have a gr um i have a question for everyone who likes eos raise your hands okay so guys today i will bring you for this video i will bring you um the most important and the most talk about topic about eos okay so it's a trending news actually so i'll be your correspondent for today but before i start i just want to greet everyone that i hope that you are having a great time and enjoying your day as well all right so guys let us start this news is brought to us by preferred currency news or pcn all right here EOS ecosystem shoots beyond $1.2 billion in 80 days. So <clears throat> here, it's been four months since the launch of EOS a mainnet. During the first two months, everything seems to have fallen into silence along with the downturn of the crypto market. However, EOS seemingly embraced its first wave of explosion in the past two and a half months, starting from mid-August reaching 8.2 billion RMB or $1.2 billion USD within 80 days. Wow, just wow, right? Some people were befuddled. Without further ado, DAP review will not unravel the myths behind the dazzling numbers for our readers via a few angles. Um, the bundled PR strategy of wallet plus EOS nodes, the countless peripheral positive cash flow opportunities, and how the investors profit lose money from those DAPs. All right, let's start. Let's start. Number one, the fearless EOS. One to three DAPs went live from August 10th uh, to October 30th totaling 220 million EOS equivalent to 8.2 billion RMB or 1.2 billion USD. So um, daily transaction volume of all dApps on EOS. Um, close to half of those dApps fell under the vice category to be more exact gambling. Right, the blue sea two months ago is now despicably red. Dabs were launching every other day. In the first one um, one and a half months, EOS bet, uh, bet enjoyed its first mover advantage, uh, received an awful lot of cop cash until the burst of bet dies that suddenly broke its records in every single aspect and even spiked above the unimaginable 10 million EOS inflow line in one day. So fast forward to mid-October when we saw blooming ways of gameplay fighting brutally just for inches of market share, farm EOS, EOS poker, endless dice and others. So among the top 10 dApps here, these are the top 10, okay, seven are gambling, two are DEX, and one remaining is a CPU rental service. So once you take a look at the table here, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes, seven gambling, two are DEX, and this is C CPU central. So um, the top 10, uh, once you look at the table, you should be able to grasp why the gambling space is a cruel Red Sea. The top 10 generate revenue of 190 million plus EOS versus the remaining um, 51 that only share 1.7 million EOS. Extreme a Matthew effect indeed. So 1.1, mechanism and competition in the gambling gameplay. Holistically speaking, most EOS gambling games follow a similar rudimentary framework despite the variety of rules. Here's how it works. The DAP issues its own tokens in the game and, dis and distributes the tokens proportionally by the amount users contribute in every round. The rewards also follow a halving schedule every specific period of time. So the development team periodically distributes dividends to all the token holders. Although the expected value of the winning probability in such gambling games is negative, token holders, um, assuming they are rational investors, could still realize profits from dividends and sell tokens once token is listed.
Okay, we have a few examples here. First, EOS bet. So EOS bet is the first gambling dApp on EOS, also being the first one distributing dividends. <clears throat> the good user experience coming from its strong operation easily sent it to the top of the EOS dApp's ranking. Nonetheless, the tokens are not transferable, nor were they listed on any exchange. In other words, it lacks necessary liquidity. So many players with a large share of tokens could hardly cash out despite all the dividends received. Not to mention that it got hacked twice. Whoa. The game itself did not seek improvement in gameplay or operational strategies since the initial launch. So people got bored of the game more or less quickly. Then came Bet Dice. Here. A game with seemingly better operation, tech, and token economy design. Speedly, it took over the top ranking of EOS Bet. So, Bet Dice. First, the well-designed token economy and the promise of exchange listing enticed a bunch of initial miners. The bounty program, referral rewards, and the lottery program also attract some early adopters of the game. So the participation of these miners are pl and players contributed a dividend pool with a considera um, considera considerable size. So two. Benefiting from the halving mining schedule, Betties allowed early miners and private investors to reap profits from trading on the exchange, whereas retail investors who are bullish on the dividends can buy tokens on the exchange. The game was able to control the amount of tokens <coughs> circulating in the market and thus stabilize the token price by applying a staking program to lock up tokens and avoid volatile market movement. Such market making ability attracted more capital injection. Next, fourth, the lottery gameplay. <coughs> the lottery gameplay intensified user retention of the game as it diversifies the product offering. Um, the VIP program also improved the user experience for the players who spent a lot. So the acceptance of BT and Black Token for payment opened up other channels of customer acquisition. In a word, BetDies embraced true prosperity with the optimizing efforts described above and never fell off from the top since the beginning of October. Congratulations, BetDies. Good job. <clears throat> okay, so here, EOS Poker. EOS Poker was the first EOS gambling game that involved some strategy, game theory. More complicated, but more fun for the players. Um, the DAB was able to kick off of the project with only the miners by allowing them mining with low-cost optimal strategies and trade with a preset price on the exchange. So the first group of players were attracted to the game by the dividends they could earn from their collateralized tokens. The team also complemented players with poker tokens to exchange for players staking CPU. Though it got hacked once, the dev team announced it would accept all responsibility and make up players' losses. Okay. Endless Dice was a game that hyped late, yet still hyped, quoting the mechanic analysis. Okay, the essence of the game lies within the trading volume, which was pushed by the miners and the halving schedule. The game doesn't have a token sale, meaning sale or pre-mine, so allowing the game to start generating dividends shortly. As a result, first mover advantage for the early adopters was high enough to attract miners and large investors to participate in the trading for example an account named um like a uh, like terry fox a large token holder in bet dies as well as the largest holder of et has owned 4.5 15 rather 4.15 million tokens in endless dice and accumulated 3,000 plus EOS from the game. Wow! Immediately after the game hit the halving point, the token was listed on new decks to gain more liquidity, a very strategic move on behalf of the game. The dividends bring more players on board and higher trading volume. More importantly, <coughs> the game does not require depositing the token as collaterals to receive div dividends. 
In a nutshell, the halving schedule in mining is a seemingly direct and a simple way to kick off and to incentivize the early participants. Still, um, a game without a matrix of products and corresponding operational strategy can simply die hard and quickly. So note, all these dApps are highly risky. This article only aims to articulate how the ecosystems work, but not to provide any investment advice. Okay, 1.2, exchange and EOS. DEX, or decentralized exchange, has long been a thriving category in the ETH ecosystem. Usually, there are two types of DEX. First, order book mode. It has on-chain and off-chain order book. The former has a higher degree of decentralization, but is not so cost-effective and efficient. The latter is more seen in the DEX world, with OX as the best-known project, others including uh, Ether, Delta, and Loopering. 2. Reserved mode. So this type is more sensitive to the trading speed, targeting some instant trading scenarios such as internal decks of a wallet. An example would be um, Kyber Network. Okay, new decks. Dex is the second largest type of dApp on EOS, with the user activity level slightly below gambling dApps. Um, higher speed and no gas fee are the two features that offset the weakness of a lower degree of decentralization in EOS. To some extent, <clears throat> still DEXs on EOS are very nascent. The most, um, the most mature one in the market is probably NewDEX, as it delivers the best user experience and owns more than 80% of the market share with its trending, um, with its trending DAO, DAO and trading volume. All right. So, from a technology standpoint, NewDEX is a centralized exchange with user experience of DEX. In other words, while NewDEX allows users to trade seamlessly in the internet, um, internal wallet, like how people trade on DEX, the operation is still centralized. As the user created an order, the tokens and are transferred to a temporary account on NewDEX and are transferred back once the order is filled. The process does not require any smart contract. Also, despite a more secure process brought by the shortened period of time, when users' funds are exposed and under risk, um, the settlement mechanism is still similar to a centralized exchange. So Ethereum in total has generated 4.68 million um, ETH YTD. All right, Ethereum are on gaming. ES has created a much more impressive record within a much shorter period. A crucial reason being that the combo of high TPS and no transaction fee allows players to have very smooth gaming experience in games that require high frequencies such as dice. Okay, so here guys, the bundled PR strategy in the um, ecosystem. So here. Okay, start start EA start EOS IO, EOS Nation, EOS Canada. So these are the incomprehensive list of EOS nodes. Now on the one hand, a node usually holds a large amount of EOS, which uh, which incentivizes itself to work hard on promoting EOS for mass adoption. On the other hand, each node had done enough work to build a community when it ran campaigns for the EOS Supernodes election. These nodes have both advantage and natural propensity uh, to create and promote dApps. The competition among these nodes is doubled edge, um, whilst they compete in subsectors such as wallet and sidechain. They are in the same boat when it comes to the prospect of EOS. 2.2 Wallet. Since early this year, DAP Review has mentioned a couple times that the major race for wallets is way ahead to start. The lead runners are only leading for now. There are essentially no use case with massive adoption, and as a result, any wallet that captures the right wave of mass adoption could easily attain millions of users. Back in the day when the I uh, when ICOs just became popular, I'm token was able to capture <coughs> excuse me the retail demand 
to participate in the institutional sales. Um, it was so successful that many newbies even thought an I'm token address was equivalent to any ETH address. So that's in China. Fast forward to today, under this severely um, deteriorated market, the number of retail investors has tumbled so much that the remaining users would only use their wallets for a deposit. So many won't um, open their wallets for days or weeks. A summary, no one will use a wallet without a legit ca use case that could uh, ignite mass adoption. So here are the DAP wallets, Cobalt Wallet Trust, Token Pocket, Me.1, and some Chinese, I don't know the name. Okay, the vast majority of DAP users are captured by a few early mover wallets. Results from our research among Chinese DAP communities like WeChat and international communities like Discord show that Trust Wallet and Cobalt Wallet are the go-to wallets for ETH DAPs, whereas Token Pocket, Meet One, Math Wallet, and BitPortal are the ones for EOS DAPs. Wallets play a key role in promoting EOS DAPs. It's reciprocal for both sides as wallets need use cases to activate their existing users. While well, DAPs love wallets that can bring in traffic, a wallet with a large amount of users is even handed with DAP that has quality content at this moment no real buyer or seller market has formed yet. So f these EOS wallets do not have a high entry barrier for a DAP to be listed, nor do they charge any fee for listing but earn referral rewards for the traffic generated via the ref link or referral link. More than two wallets have reaped 1 million plus RMB profit just through this promotion channel. Per our information source, worth mentioning is that some nodes have invested in wallets like Token Pocket and Meet One. Such a strategic partnership creates strong synergy to convert a few thousand wallet users into DAP users. So on the other hand, the more decentralized operational management in Ethereum does not allow to existence of supernodes. The ETH DAP community fails to have more diverse promotional di um, drivers other than Discord, Reddit, Medium, Twitter, Telegram, and other bloggers on social media. So as a result, user acquisition is not as effective on the target audience as the approaches used in EOS. So three, other opportunities proliferated from the ecosystem. In addition to EOS dApps, many people sense the opportunities, okay? Now these opportunities include metrics management and operational man services. So 3.1, metrics management. So straightforward as it is, players are more or less likely to derive profits. If they join when a DAP is hype or before it hypes, if it ever does, they could easily be underwater if they join after the peak, right? Users are likely to follow the rankings that institutions like DAP Reader and DAP Review provide and to make decisions of entry exit upon the stats. As a result, dApps are incentivized to leverage the bot services to interact with the smart contracts and quickly get to the top. So this kind of service usually charges 300 to 500 EOS. Our view on this is that fraudulent, fraudulent, activity, fraudulent activities can hardly be cleansed in any nascent industry or sector, especially without much regulation. So people who participated in speculative activities also, to some extent, encourage the fraud for a dap that has quality content diverse product offering and reasonable token economy design it creates value for users beyond monetary values and then it's less meaningful to leverage such services furthermore going forward third-party ranking services are looking to add way to metrics other than user activity statistics in the ranking model in the end, all that, matter, all that matters is having fun products that keep real users. No speculation can stand out, and even if it stands out for a bit, it won't last. <clears throat> Alright, next, 3.2 churning. 
So most EOS dApps have bounty programs like airdrop and candies to attract new users. Yes, people who hold a large number of EOS accounts collateralize, collateralize CPUs via their accounts in use and churn with the phantom accounts. So there are simply too many ways of churning. According to the developers of Yum.Game. Game, we blocked more than 20k EOS churning accounts overnight. Among the 460k users on the mainnet, DAP Review estimates more than 100k accounts are phantom accounts, and that's on the conservative end. CPU rental service. So, here. EOS confirmed the quota of CPU proportion, uh, proportionally when the total amount of the collateralized CPU skyrocketed players could hardly enjoy a smooth gaming experience or take any action. If they don't stake more EOS, EOS Knights, the only top ranked non gambling EOS game, requires players to stake than 100 plus EOS in order to game smoothly under live traffic. Not to mention that the requirement could easily spike to 300 plus EOS if a player wants a 0.3 CPU under a BZ network. Now, a rental service comes to the market as a result, as not all players are willing to collateralize a large amount of EOS, but rather would like to pay interest for the rental. Among the three rental services shown above, some could even accept Alipay, creating a seamless product experience. The interest rate for the fee business falls between 0.2% to 1% daily. That's way higher than most of the asset management of or even P2P lending products. So the business itself also has seemingly um, low entry barrier but high reward. Okay, so here, as soon as the games allowed people to mine, all kinds of mining bots started to proliferate. The screenshot above is the mining section in the discover page of Token Pocket here. So in the gambling dApps, players receive tokens um, proportionally corresponding to the amount they put in people could cash out either via dividends or through trading on exchanges. Miners have, um, miners have accumulated a large amount of tokens by betting with optimal winning um, probability despite the fact that players have negative expected value for profit in the game due to the 1.5% house edge, players could still offset the negative expected value with the dividends and the secondary market opportunities. So next 3.5 operational services. Free business always has low risk and low entry barrier. DAP Review recently noticed that some people have been providing highly profitable profitable operational services that includes getting listing on DAP rankings, getting listed on wallets, um, promotional reviews on all kinds of social media, selling the DAP in a group chat like WeChat, Telegram, or Kakao, etc. Just a friendly reminder that item, num item number one and two are completely free, at least for now. Those service providers are simply earning money from information asymmetry. Next, problems and prospects. Although the EOS DAP ecosystem has been triumph in the past two and a half months, there are still pain points yet to be solved. All right, so guys, um, 4.1 users. The current gambling players are all existing EOS holders. So for the non-crypto people who are still the absolute majority of the world, the threshold is higher when it comes to creating an account, not to mention the following step like grasping how the whole CPU, net, or RAM thing works, and then actually acquiring the tokens and eventually playing. At the same time, a lot of retail investors lost all their tokens when they were betting. From what we've seen, there were even online chat groups that help you quit gambling in EOS. Whoa. So here, 4.2 smart contracts. It could sound ridiculous, but smart contracts of most EOS gambling games are simply not open sourced. Players seem to enjoy the non-open source devs as much as they loved 
how blockchain made games more fair and transparent. No one would know how the mechanism of the probability actually works if the codes are not open source. So the hacking events even became the excuse for the DAP developers' choice of not disclosing the code. Just ask yourself, how much longer dare you play with such non-open source DAPs? 4.3 Gaming Content Needless to say, mechanism of gambling games does not have much diversity. The real differentiation competition was just the token economy and the operational tactics. Not much challenge lies on the development side. A few friends who own nodes themselves more or less agree that gambling could be a means to test how ecosystem plays out, but not an end. To get to the next level, refinement for the middle layers and infrastructure such as protocols like ERC721 and ERC1155 are definitely being called for. Highly risk investment and how investors make money. DAPs have received investments from individuals and institutions. Investors simply buy the tokens in ES with a discount and earn dividends. Once the tokens get listed of new DEX, they could either sell or continue to hold for more dividends. Now, during the bear market in the past few months, bet dice tokens grew against the trend to 17 times at IEOs, 600 dice from the IEOs, um, that's 10,000 dice price at private sale. For some other tokens, we also see growth between two to eight times. So still not could everyone hold their token still the max point so we'd like to end this article by comparing eos with eth again despite the fact that their revenue generated and trading activities on eos have surpassed eth for now we can hardly say that eos is anywhere close to where the eth ecosystem is in fact judging from the angle of diversity and complexity dabs on eth score way better truth is that while ES has better performance on the gambling category, ETH is not disadvantaged and all when it comes to collectible games or strategy games that do not require high interaction frequency. Furthermore, the network effect of ETH is global, whereas EO seems to have captured attention mostly from Asia. The majority of EOS DAP players are in China, Japan, Korea, and Singapore. As DAP Review communicated with some developers and players overseas, we found that many of them did not follow EOS at all or were not aware of the EOS DAP explosion over the past two months, and that really said something about the next step for the EOS ecosystem. We truthfully look forward to more types of games and applications and more new users from the regions joining the ecosystem and eventually mass adoption. Woo, all right. So guys, that was that was tough, right? That was tough. All right. So guys, that has been for the most trending topic, right? As you can see here, most trending topic of uh, for today that's for EOS now guys I, I know that you want to be updated every day so please visit preferredcurrency.news and subscribe now and subscribing you can use your preferred method you can use PayPal for a monthly recurring that's $15 per month fiat or you can use the coinbase option for $180 annual subscription to be paid with your favorite crypto now you can contact us directly through the website, okay? But mm, you can contact directly the man behind the preferred currency news. His name is Donald Lewis. You can call his number at 1801-601-8105. WhatsApp 1801-471-6939. Um, Skype ID Donald.fcda. You can follow him on Twitter at Preferred Crypto. Um, you can join our Telegram channel at PreferredCrypto.News and you can send a private message to Donald Lewis on Telegram. His ID is at PreferredCrypto. Alright. 
so guys that's it for today please 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 um visit preferredcurrency.news all right and don't forget to subscribe so that you will be the first one to get notified because if you subscribe you will be getting a newsletter from us we will be notifying you for the updates all right now let me show you first before i end here this is the um newsletter that we will be sending our subscribers 12 hours before okay 12 hours before we post videos here on youtube and i would like to here let you see the donald's research list because guys this is really cool right donald's research list is a complete list of tokens and coins right it's really a complete list list and it is being updated every day by donald of course all right here why is it not showing okay by donald and what else it cannot be found anywhere else on the internet but only here okay let's not just open it only here at preferred currency news so um i know that you're curious already okay i know that you're curious so guys please visit now preferredcurrency.news i hope to see you all right i hope to see you on our telegram channel i hope to um talk to you on our telegram channel and i hope that you will like this video and please leave a comment down below all right so feel free to do that we are open for suggestions, opinions, and whatever. All right? So, guys, thank you so much for having me as your correspondent today. Again, this has been Alex now signing off.